Hello, hi, yes, my name is Jacob, and I'm currently working on a video about the menu design of Persona 5. The video will eventually come out over on my main channel, Frustrated Jacob, or it may already be out by the time that you're watching this video, but I was having a hard time organizing my thoughts and forming a script on the whole thing, so I decided I would just kind of watch all of the footage of the menus that I had compiled and talk my way through the entire thing and record that so that I could then just adapt my ramblings into actual notes that I could then turn into a script to turn into a final video. I wound up doing it for more than an hour, and since there's a lot of stuff in this video that definitely won't be in the final product, I thought maybe I could go ahead and release it. The only thing you gotta know beforehand is that I was not planning on releasing this to the public, these were just notes for myself that I was gonna keep privately, so I wasn't, like, trying to be entertaining or keep up a steady pace necessarily, and I recorded the entire thing in like 480p because again, I was just gonna use it for my own reference and stick it on a hard drive somewhere. So most of the video on this is going to be really low quality and also all of the game's audio you're just gonna be hearing going through my microphone instead of the source recording of it. If you guys like this, then if I ever wind up doing this again for another video, I could try and record it a bit more professionally, you know, at a higher resolution with the game's audio piped into the video recording, you know, that kind of stuff, and uh, maybe we could make this a thing. Or you can all tell me that you hate it, and this will just be a one-time thing. Also, while this is just, you know, going to be footage of the menus, if you're really, really uptight about spoilers for Persona 5 and whatnot, most of the footage in this will be from June, so there will be party member spoilers and a couple of other minor things that pop up if you're paying attention. Also, since this video is spoiler-free, let's try and keep those comments spoiler-free, okay? Anyway, please enjoy. Or, you know, don't. It's your prerogative, really. Perfect. Yeah, so let's just talk about what's neat about this these menus, shall we? Ta da! Bum bum bum. Okay, so once again we have uh, we have an active element on the button that we're gonna press here. Not only is it is there a moving element on the item that we've currently selected, but it features a color that is not visible anywhere else on screen. The blue highlight that accompanies the selection icon here is totally unique on the screen. It also inverts the uh, the color of the text that's within, when it's within the uh, moving blue bubble, um, but I think that's more just to draw even, that's to draw even greater visual attention by kind of making the black and white on, you know, the U and T and button or the E and S over and press kind of, you know, fluctuate in and out. It's, it's, it's yet another thing to draw your eye to that spot. When you press it, you get a very nice, obvious confirm sound. And there is camera movement. When you make the selection, the movement is very smooth. When you reach your destination, there's slight camera jostle as we rest at the spot where we are supposed to be. This makes the very this makes the quick camera movement feel a bit realer and weightier. And also tells us we've gotten to the end of that movement. Okay. Once again, a moving element on the item that we currently have selected. When we move to different items, the entire backdrop moves with that same meaty camera movement and more elements on screen to tell us what we're, what what current what our current selection is. Okay, hold on. Once again, moving element on screen, and now it is, again, an element that isn't really present anywhere else on the screen, except this time it's red, which was very prominent on the previous screen, but on this screen it's just black and white. So the red still stands out a lot. It's very obvious which option is currently selected, because the, because the thing that is currently selected is the only thing that's visible until you highlight it. Until you actually highlight the selection, it just shows the current selection, so it's clearly established to the viewer that the bigger letters, the bigger letters with the black interior and white outline is clearly the option that is currently selected. If the fact that it was bigger 
and the fact that the the other one is kind of in black wasn't obvious enough. The other one is surrounded by black. That is not the nice white outline. Um, it's made even more obvious by the fact that when you aren't hovering over it, you just see whether it's on or off. You don't see both options. You just see what is currently selected. Once again, we have uh, the um, an, an active element on these with this little star spinning when you highlight the options. movement from the characters from the setting with the uh, cars everything lets you know that you are interacting with the system okay Again, very obvious which one you have currently selected because there's more, you know, if there's two options on screen, that's always bad because you've got to figure out which one is which. There's more than two options on screen and only one of them is highlighted in bright red. Also, that one is made more pronounced, more prominent, way more visual, way, way, way bigger pulled out, and it has more detail. Until you actually highlight the individual file, you don't see uh, the game's difficulty mode, normal, the playtime, 30 hours, and the name of the main character. The other details are still there, so you can kind of at a glance see what you're looking at, but uh, again, it's just more detail on the option that you are currently sitting on. So you know which, you know where, you know where your cursor is. You know what you're about to pick if you pick something. Even when we get to a uh, a binary yes or no choice in this game, we get an obvious. It's very obvious as to which one our cursor is currently on because again we have an active element and a color that isn't really present anywhere else on screen. I mean there is more blue here, but it's a different hue of blue. There's a drop kind of glow effect. There's movement makes it clear which one we've currently selected. Okay. On screen here, we have this slight transparency in the back that shows the setting that we're currently in. It's overlaid with red. It's all It all gets tinted red, so you don't have any conflicting colors going on. But you don't feel like you've been completely pulled out of the experience. This feels like it's overlaying over the, the uh, current experience instead of sending you to an entirely different uh, setting. It's still connected to the rest of the game, which I forget what exactly that informs. Hold on a second. I'm going to try and find something. Which one of these does this affect? That's strange. Well, it generally has to do with making you... <sighs> Crud, what does this have to do with? What does this have to do with? Why is this good? Because it doesn't feel detached. It doesn't feel detached from the rest of the game. You still feel like this is a part of the game instead of taking you out into an entirely separate, like, section. The, the menus in other games like this feel like they're, like, 
like cordoned off from the rest of the game. You go to black, you come up in a totally different setting, you leave the menu, go to black, come back up in the game world. Here, the transition in and out of the menu is number one, very quick. You go from in-game world to uh, functioning interactivity with the menu in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. 31 frames divided by two 15 frames, because I'm pretty sure I would, the, most of those frames were repeating at least once. So, uh, yeah, uh -huh. so that's 15 frames. Within 15 frames, you're in a menu you can interact with. And it's not removed from the existing game world, so it still feels connected to everything else that you're doing in the game instead of, like, you're leaving the game behind to go into something else. Okay. That red... Uh, the, the view of the world helps to keep you kind of seated in that world instead of somewhere else. Um, there are still elements of movement on this screen, but they're very subdued. These stars don't really draw a lot of attention. They make the image a little bit more dynamic, so you're not just staring at something that is flat and simple, but these are not nearly enough to draw your attention away from the juking and jiving of, uh, of the cursor which moves much quicker. When you're going frame by frame, the movement over here is almost not perceptible, whereas this is still moving at a high speed. And once again, we've got a color that isn't available anywhere, that isn't visible anywhere else on screen. You do have blue down here with the X on confirm, but the cross or whatever, but other than that, the only blue on screen is this right here, and it's a different shade of blue. It draws a lot of attention, because it draws more attention than this one, because it's moving, it's not down in the corner, it's right up in your face. It's the most noticeable thing on screen. Now, you don't necessarily have to be able to see the blue all the time, because the motion of the kind of, uh, this kind of tan here, you see, it's not quite white, is it? It's kind of tan-ish. That tan also isn't visible anywhere else on screen. That's also a unique color. It's not, it's not totally unique. It's close to white, but it's just different enough that, again, it draws your attention. And even when the blue isn't super visible, that the movement of that red is more than enough to get your attention. Now, if you'll notice, whenever we move the cursor from option to option, while it's in between, the blue go sends spikes way out to the side. Like so. Again, this is this is visual feedback that you've made an input. We're not just jumping from one option to the other. Like we're not going from this like this solid this solid image to this solid image. There is an animation of them moving of them moving between each other. One is growing while the other is shrinking, and you have that big blue spike going outwards accompanying the selection sound effect very obvious that you are doing that. Very obvious that a change is being made. That an input is being made. That's all feedback. This over here is yet another active element on screen. Nobody's really looking at that, but it's just another it's another um, it's another sign of your input affecting the setting that you're in. This down here, the, uh, the description of what you're looking at and that moving around, all more feedback, but all of it relatively minimal and not super distracting. Once again, we're transitioning between menus, but it's all kept very fluid. If you look at this, we aren't really moving to another screen. It's more like we're revealing a different part of the screen that we couldn't see before because the stars wrap all the way around back over here and the red background of our setting is still visible in the corners. So it doesn't feel like we just opened up an entirely separate thing. It feels like we are 
uh, just in a different, we were, we were just, we we're just shuffling things around almost like we moved paper around on a table and revealed different layers. Once again, we get that screen shake to, uh, let us know that we are, we are interacting with this environment. Not only do we have the actual, uh, cause if we go back here. Once you're on the letters, the letters stay pretty stationary. They jump around when you're when you're when you're moving to them. When you're on them, they're stationary. Here, once you have a party member selected, not only do you have the colors juking and jiving, the portrait of the character is also boop, boop, bop, 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 just a little bit. So this is a consistency of presentation thing. When we go between these menus, number one, again, it looks like we're just shuffling things around. Different elements of the screen are moving, but it's all the same elements. They're just getting shuffled around and repositioned. And also when we go between, we're going from an, we went from initially an up and down menu to an up and down menu, and then another up and down menu where you go between different options always up and down or if it's if it's a menu where you go left to right that's fine but it has to stay left to right most the vast majority of menus in this game are up and down exclusively there's no you never see two columns of things next to each other always up and down if you feel you have to filter between multiple different things like this they're different they're totally different screens you'll also notice that when we go over to these other menus, the active element actually freezes. You see, it's still there, it didn't just vanish, but it freezes in place, so there's no more motion. The th person we're currently selecting is pulled forward so that they're very obvious and prominent on screen. In fact, they're pulled forward more than they were before. They become even, they become even slightly bigger, it looks like. Yes, yeah, see, look, they become even bigger to make sure that we know who they are, but it's no longer moving and the color is all drained out of it. All of that color is gone because we're over here now looking at this. After we select the spell, then we're back over here and we can make our selection, but there's still in the background here a highlight around on to show that we're use this is her magic that we're using. We don't have her little indication that she's in the party or the leader is gone. Again, she's different. We know oh no, that's actually not true. Never mind. That's not true. She's just not in the party. Okay. Yeah. But the little the thing stays around her even after we select uh the spell that she's using. And we can uh so we know that we're using her MP. Again, we're always moving, not really moving through different screens, we're just shuffling around the things that are on screen or adding more. You also get movement uh, from side to side, when you press, uh, L1 and R1. So when you went to the right there, the items kind of move in from the side. And they move from the side depending on which section, which direction you're scrolling in the, uh, in the menu. An indication that these are coming in from the side, which keeps it consistent with the action that you're taking down here. Like a nice, prominent movement on the character you currently have selected. Instead of just changing, so oftentimes you'll see menus where the text inside of a box will change, but like it can be hard to tell sometimes. So you'll notice that whenever whenever the text changes in this game, other than like down here, there it doesn't so much. But 
when you're going through the main menu, the um, uh, section back here, the text down here changes its angle slightly every time that you scroll through stuff. Similarly, when we get here, whenever you flip between these guys, it's always it's always melee weapon. So if you look at this, it's always melee weapon, range weapon, protector, accessory, outfit. If just this text was changing, it would not be enough. Even if you were flipping through these and you had the sound effects, it wouldn't be as satisfying as having that nice jostle on all these menus every time you scroll through to let you know that this is changing. Notice that when he uh, flips his little, when he does his little trick and he flips the bullet outwards, on the menus other than the ranged weapon menu, it just kind of, whoop, there it goes, wee, goodbye. On the menu with the gun, whoop, the animation actually stops midway and highlights how much ammo that weapon carries. Good stuff. Once again, moving element on important descriptions so we can see it. Now these, this doesn't move at all, and I'm actually kind of disappointed by that. I wish it did a little bit, but it's not that bad. Keeping to a different color element right here with the blue. Blue shows what we have currently selected. Different color. Again, here you not only have the big E appear when you equip something, you have this you have the E appear and you also have this hard movement over to the side. It jumps several frames to the right and kind of almost discharges around as the times whatever flies off. Whee! And it's very obvious that you've made a selection. Again, thanks to MIDI sound design as well. Also, I really appreciate that these things actually freeze where the animation is, not just like at a preset spot. When they freeze, they actually freeze where they should. It's pretty incredible, honestly, that it doesn't just go to a pre-canned animation of when it should be. Like, watch this. When it goes to Morgana, and whoop, freezes where it's supposed to. Fantastic stuff. Love it. Again, very, and then, and then since, it, since it's that big, striking shape, you know I've picked Morgana. All the other names get faded out, and you got that nice black-on-white Morgana right there with the big, bold shape around it. This is nice, having the arrows bob a little bit. So you, it's not just looking at an arrow, you have the actual motion of up or down. Very good. Having, and this is this is not new for Persona, but having something that just tells you if it's better or worse is so nice. Having something that just says, like, just don't waste my time. If it's objectively better, if, if the stats are better than what I currently have equipped, tell me. But that nice motion of up and down is also really good. Having up here your currently equipped item and it's stats so that if you didn't have these, you could easily compare it to whatever you currently have selected. Very good.
same as usual. You have a big, nice logo on whatever is currently equipped and uh, the changing color and movement here. Not only does the, um, uh, the, the color thing bring your attention in, but the actual proportions of this menu warp every time you move the thing. It widens a little bit around your current selection. So again, just feedback, feedback, feedback. I'm making inputs, I am changing the setting. When you feel like you are making an impact on the setting, you feel like you are, uh, and then it feels satisfying. Yeah, that's a darker red, isn't it? I don't know, maybe not. Big, nice exclamation point lets you know right there. Boom! This is an important thing. Pay attention to this box. This is not to be casually dismissed. Red and blue. It's all red and black. There's no white anywhere in this emergency menu. So it's more dire than uh, other stuff that you would see. All red and all red and black. The blue is still there to draw your attention to your current selection, but they cut out the white so you know this is an important decision that you have to make here. It's an important decision. Do not screw this up. Once again, movement and blue to draw attention. Blue draws attention to the important elements. So just in case this being selected and the moving model of Jack Frost in the background don't let you know, the game is sure to let you know Jack Frost. This is Jack Frost that we're talking about here. Are you sure you want to release Jack Frost? And then yes or no around the option that you're selecting. And again, you've got that nice jostle on not the camera, but on the items. They grow and shrink at the same time, and you've got that movement. One is bigger, one is smaller. They get bigger when you're selecting them. Once again, nice movement, movement on the description of the current thing. Whenever you flip between these, once again, it doesn't feel like you're going to a totally separate menu. It doesn't feel like you're going through a loading screen because the background stays consistent. So even here, you've still got this black pattern where you can barely make out the star pattern in the background. Or is that a number pattern? I can't. Numbers and stars, maybe? Looks like it's the numbers and the stars. Now it goes black for a second here, but when it comes back up, you get stars. You get you still got the pattern in the background, and it still has this white streak. In fact, the white streak from before, even though it's at a different angle, this white streak becomes this white streak, more or less. See, this one kind of merges into it. Shump. There we go. Very nice. And we return the uh, kind of the red thing up in the corner. Draw attention to Akira and left and right. Those are your main uh, interface interactions right now to get between these two guys. And also it keeps with the visual appearance of the last one, which had red over in the corner. And it's still transparent into your current setting. So you've, you've always got that slight transparency into your current setting. You can always see back into the real world a little bit. When you go between these, Again, the background doesn't change, the interface doesn't change. Everything gets shuffled to indicate it's not it's not just the text moving around. This whole thing jukes and jives to let you know that it's just changed around. The white band whips back around and brings with it the new stats. See, look, check this out. It looks like they're being carried on it. It looks like that white band just carried all of them in and they come and settle down. But you're always flipping between this same setting. There's enough jostle to let you know you're interacting with it. You're making 
a meaningful, meaty difference into the game world. But you're still in this same menu, so it's consistent. White band goes away, the model goes away, this description whips in from the left. Let's watch that backing out animation. She moves, everything pulls in, comes back up. When we go back, everything whips around again. We return to this menu. How did that come in, by the way? It just appeared, but it appeared before this went away. So it also looks decent. And these big brush strokes, again, look, see, this still visible, still part of the setting. Always still connected to the real world setting. And once again, it feels like we're just revealing something that was hidden underneath. We're not moving to another setting. This was always a part of the exact same menu. We were just moving elements around within that menu. It was, you were always in the same place, you never left. Shouldn't have to point this out by this point. This all works exactly the same way. This kind of rolls in like a big Paper Mario piece of paper, whoop, lays itself down, boom. Forces Joker out of the frame in favor of Joker. Still got the star motif in the background, still got the real world setting visible back here. Oh yeah, should we point it out? Whenever your person, when it's a your persona you currently have equipped, when it's the persona you currently have equipped, the band shows this blue tint. I'll let you know this one is different. Still got this nice subtle movement down here. Since there's not really anything to select on this screen, there's not a lot of movement. It's a nice respite, honestly. Since there's not really anything to, since there's no, since there's nothing to select here, you're you're on this screen to look at stats. You're on this screen to look at numbers, but making the numbers move around would make them harder to read. So they keep a slight active element, so you're not just staring at a static image by putting in these stars in the background here, making them a little bit more pronounced than they are on some of these other menus, making them nice and visible, making the movement nice and visible, so the screen, and making this nice glow here, so the screen isn't just sitting here static and boring, but there isn't any Jukin and Jive and menu elements to distract you <sighs> from the numbers. The screen is kind of a respite. Once again, you get Jostle, and even get a unique shape up here for each of the characters. Oh, 
Uh oh. Using that beige element here. Over by one. Again, another color that's not visible anywhere else except for here on your current selection. Using unique colors to draw your attention towards important elements. Once again, we're on a mostly static screen here where there's just information to read. So we bring those stars back with some nice emphasis here. Foomp. And very prominently make the real world visible. But not a whole lot of moving elements other than that. You get this, even on this menu here, there's no stars where we just have the black and the background. We've got spinning around the only real interaction you can make other than the almost universal command of left and right between options. You have right here the d-pad thing which combines to give you some motion somewhere on the screen and uh, also combine and shows you where the command is. Also if you look at this, once again the element of simply moving stuff around instead of moving between different settings, this button right here to go left is the same one that tells you to go right, it just moves and spins around. I mean, it doesn't really do that, but you know, that's what it looks like on the menu. Again, everything flows and is part of a cohesive whole. More movement, finger picking, the kind of lines in the background, the um, uh, beep, 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 and the, this twitching around and these things coming in and out. these other menus. I think it's new and worth commenting upon, other than what we've already seen. Oh, man. The calendar. Oh, no. The calendar does not let you see the real world. Neither does this one. Okay. Uh, note, comment on the fact that the uh, fan site menu does not let you see any elements of the real world. So the fan site menu and the calendar menu both cut out all the real world visibility elements. So it's not totally universal. However, if I recall correctly, the request menu is also available from the uh, from the meeting menu, so perhaps it has a different design because it's not always meant to be viewed from the same place. Anyway, uh... The menu also, the, the calendar menu is also pretty static, utilitarian, but you're probably not gonna spend much time here. It's kinda here because it has to be.
some slight splashes of white down here so it doesn't just look like we're keeping uh, the exact same like consistent look up across this entire thing gives it a slight sense of artistic flourish instead of just being here's all the stuff where the real world is visible all right so this does a nice job of drawing your attention over here. However, the only unfortunate thing here is that the two options you're most likely to use are load data and save data. They're down at kind of the bottom of the menu, but whatever. Still make the real world visible here. And in fact, it draws extra special attention to the fact that it's the real world because it lets you see the entire shot for a second then breaks it away so the remnants that are left are noticeable. Nice meaty sound. This goes away. Bright white framing black with the red shattered glass around it. One thing I don't really like about this is the load and save menus are nearly identical. Check this out. In fact, they pretty much are identical, aren't they? The load and save menus are virtually identical, except for reread your entries up to this point and record your actions up to this point. Even the text up at the top is very similar. Both of them start with re and your. Record and reread actions or entries, and then save or load. Can't tell you how many times I've gone into one of these menus and then been afraid of either overwriting my save file or loading something instead of saving, and I've had to back out and double check to make sure which one I've picked. Because even though it says up there save and load, it's like, well, what if this is a weird thing where it's, you know, like, even though it says up there, I still get paranoid and want to back out and check it again. I almost don't like that this one doesn't have the nice emergency thing. Now, the consistent menu of a system with the gears in the back draws you to attention to the fact that this is a meta operation. This has something to do with the larger functions of the game. So that does make you pay slightly more attention to it than you would otherwise. Again, it makes it slightly different. This gray color is unique. These images in the back are unique. And once again, yes and no are up and down options. And it's very clear which one we are currently hovering over because of movement. Yes and no, up and down, and you can even see the main menu screen, uh, mostly pretty muted, but with bright red seats to make sure you know exact to make sure you know what you're looking at, even through these muted colors. And even though it's not really that important, you have a little Easter egg here: system return to title. Even when you're sitting st steady here in the um, moving between locations menu, you've got the motion on the thing you've currently highlighted, and you've got the protagonist moving up and down in addition to blinking. Slight, subtle motion to let you know, hey, don't worry, the game is still working. The game didn't crash. Your icon moves. This moves. Things jostle when you move to them camera shifts to follow you, it centers on your current selection.
These loading screens make it seem less like a loading screen and more like a transition. By making these loading screens resemble subway trains or people walking around in the streets, you get the sense not simply that you're warping from location to location, but that you are traveling. It makes the world seem bigger than just a collection of disconnected screens, even when you are using quick travel. Alrighty. Really don't know how much we're going to have to pull from here. Stuff that hasn't been discussed already. I really don't know how much is going to be. Uh, giving you relevant information. The money always pops up in a nice, clear way. It's not, you know, it's not it's placed prominently. Everything else fades away. So the irrelevant options and the money are plainly visible even when you're making minor purchases. Once again, we've got um, uh, on-screen movement featuring a color that, while not, like, there's, it's not that there's no white anywhere on screen, because this text over here is white, he's outlined in white, but it's still a less prominent color, especially on all of these. So the movement and the white mets, you know, which one you're picking at a time. Again, even if they are kind of curved, it's all up and down menus. When you flip through these, okay. there isn't as much jostle as we've experienced previously, but there's so much visual movement of these dog tags moving across the screen to stay in center and that heavy ch chink sound of the metal that um, uh, it kind of compensates for the lack of jostle up here on the items that are appearing. Plus the fact that most of these are gonna feature, uh, the accessory and the costume are gonna be the same, but since the weapon image and the gun image are actually gonna be different for each character, there's still noticeable change every time you make an input. There's noticeable visual change in addition to the movement and the sound effects. Again, we've got nice, helpful arrows, saying so things are up and down. In addition to the arrows, the actual, like the entire kind of shape of the attack value or accuracy value window angles up or down. Only thing that I don't really like about this menu is that when you're in here, you've got to press square to compare with what you currently own. Cause like you can see the stats right here, but if you want to actually compare abilities like or effects you've got to press square which is not plainly visible and it uh it takes up the entire screen when you do it all right which one sounds good however uh once you do see it it's nice and prominent equipped with, you got equipped up here and then money next to this one and again money is still prominent always showing exactly how much you'll be losing when you make this purchase so you know once you get into that menu everything kind of fades away it's very nice this whole thing uh, rotates as you filter through options so again you get solid visual feedback because otherwise you're, you're getting um, like you do get this jostle when things move but in addition to that you get since we're in a menu with like the text doesn't move much you know it's kind of the same problem we had in the other menu where even though it jostles, it's not huge, they added a bit of extra with this whole thing spinning whenever you press a button, so that helps. And the fact that the down arrows don't jump, only the up arrows do, so there's extra attention drawn to the, the up arrows. 
Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs, oh Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs. Amazing things can happen when you taste Reese's Puffs. Wow. Chris, no more riding your bike to school. You'll be driven by a chauffeur from now on. What? Oh, and you can't go to the concert. Yes. So we're bringing it to you. Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs. Eat them up, eat them up, eat them up, eat them up. Wow. I got Reese's Puffs in my bowl. Wow. Nowadays all cruise control. Wow. I got Reese's Puffs in my bowl. Again, we've got nice, obvious, which one am I currently, which one's my cursor currently on? Look at that. The target moves a little bit, and it's a target. Very easy to tell which one is which. I think it's just me freaking out with it. Yeah, I guess I just wouldn't talk about it. It's also worth noting that this menu, these menus hold up really well under freak out. Oh, hold on, that's actually worth noting. Notice that the entire interface changes to yellow when you're selling something. It wants to make sure that you're not going to accidentally sell anything. You're not going to sell something thinking that you're buying something. You're, they make sure that the sell menu is in bright yellow, which is uh, not not directly across the color wheel from green, but um, uh, it's not exactly like you're going to make uh, a mistake. You're not going to misrecognize one of them. You're going to know when you're in the sell menu versus the buy menu. Probably make some kind of comment on how how smooth and quick all this is, because look at this. Bam. 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 How many inputs was that? One input. Two inputs. Three inputs. Four inputs. Five inputs. Six inputs. Seven inputs. Seven inputs made in fewer seconds. Dun, dun, dun. There's no one here. Head to the exam room. Okay. So what do we want to talk about here? Takemis is slightly more cluttered. Uh, Takemis isn't quite as clear as um, as uh, the gun store one. Your eyes are naturally drawn over here because you see the movement of her shape. Your eyes are naturally going to follow that over here, and there's a ton of writing over here, so it may make you it may take you a second to notice that whoop, your options are over here somewhere. So that's a little bit sloppy, but it's not that bad. One thing, and then uh, well, we'll talk about like the nice things that are aesthetically here in a minute. Okay. So once again, we've got movement on the image, and now the color that's exclusively or pre primarily devoted to our selection is black. We've got black down here around yen, and we've got 
a very dark blue or black on um, uh, the DNA model that's going through the section that's white after Takemi. But again, we got, we got nice movement up here, nice and steady. Okay, actually there's more black coming in down here, so yeah. There's no exclusive color placement on this one, but uh, there are, but you know, you got that movement. It's made up of nice, distinct shapes. It's got that bob to it. It looks nice. They make the have thing jostle a bunch. Even though the text doesn't move, the have animation uh, gets really shaken up when you go through here. Adding in small bits like the green kind of flashing in and that pulse going out that makes it kind of, uh, yeah, adding the different color splashes in here, the little pulses you see every now and then, just makes the whole thing a bit more dynamic and interesting to look at. And once again, worth noting, the real world is still plainly visible. You can see Akira and Morgana, you can see the exam room. Uh, we're still clearly in the real world here. Takemi and What's-His-Face both have a presence inside of their menu. So then thematically, the stuff that's interesting about this one is if you look at her menus, uh, we've got her, you know, contact information or whatever up here, the name of her clinic. You'll also notice over here that where it says Yen, there's a line drawn because everything in this is formatted like a medical form. We actually had to, so we wrote down in kind of more handwriting looking font how much money we have. And then you see here, it says the date, but the date is written in in pencil, not typed up. And everything else has nice, clean uh, writing, but the cost uh, is kind of in that pencil-y font again. And there were pulses just a second ago. There were two nice, clean pulses just right here, 336 or so. So it's easy to get clean shots of the color, but I don't think I had clean shots of the pulses. Same here. When you're uh, when you're actually buying it, uh, the money and the quantity both look like they are handwritten. What are you buying? And you're checking a little box inside of a medical form. I think that's everything that I want from Takemi, unfortunately. What do you want? <sighs> Minor menus, while not as stylized, uh, still throw in a splash of color that's not otherwise visible on screen, and everything is still organized in up in an up and down fashion. Both the listing of the actual items you can purchase, and when you're listing, uh, when you're trying to pick how many you want to buy. It's all in up and down orientation. How much light yen you're gonna lose is nice and big in red. You can see the cost. Crunch. There's good sound design and everything, but if you listen to the sold out s um, sound, it's not, it's a good sound, but it's not satisfying. You don't want to produce that sound. Everything else 
has this satisfying, clean click. It's either that shink sound we're hearing there, or it's a click. It's a nice, solid, definitive click. Shink, shink. Movement, not only of the color, but the font kind of drifts a little bit. The uh, the font looks kind of grayed out and dull until you highlight over it and it becomes bright white. Again, you're moving around in the same environment, even more so than the other some of the other ones. You're literally moving around within the velvet room to different spots, but you're still within you're still grounded within that setting. probably talk a little bit about why this is one of the more cumbersome menus <sighs> why I like spending time in this one the least despite my love of this song the imagery here isn't as the imagery here isn't nearly as dynamic the imagery isn't as dynamic things don't move around as much other than your cursor and the box when you scroll over certain things which I believe happens doesn't it or does it not? Am I mistaken? No, it really doesn't, does it? The image here isn't half as dynamic. Um, definitely comments about the NPCs here talking way too much when you're scrolling through options. Talk about how there's so much information that you have to, you either have to memorize, like, everything that you have across different menus or uh, like you have to open menus dozens of times and cross compare things to figure out what's what and what you want and it just it this one is one of the more time consuming ones exclusively because there's so much information that you have to go through I wish you could have literally jumped by Arcana instead of scrolling through Arcana because look at how many personas there are in this game. There are so many things to get. Make it easier to get through them. Or just remove blank slots. Is that a possibility? Have I missed that somewhere? Oh, registered only. Should have known. I don't think there's as much to say about this one. Oh yeah, um, why, yeah, why doesn't go to bed let you go back to the real world? Like, if you back out of that menu, there's almost nothing to do, and you just have to, like, if you just, you just have to back out of this menu, and if you say, I'm not done here, then you get to walk around in a room where you can't do anything, and then to leave, you have to go up to them again. So then you get to do nothing. You are eventually allowed to go back up to them, say no, and then say yes. Like, that's a waste of time. Waste of inputs, waste of time. Nobody wants to sit through that. Comment that putting the button you have to press explicitly on the vast majority of interactions you have to perform is nice. It just keeps things straightforward. You never get confused about what you're supposed to hit.
Okay, once again, uh, the battle menu is genius because all of your, uh, all the actions you can potentially take are all clearly mapped to face buttons. This is great because number one, the usability is immediately readable. If you want to use a skill, press triangle. Use a melee weapon, press X. Defend yourself, press O. Item, press square, so on. All of the actions are immediately readable. You don't even have to know that X is typically select and O is typically back, at least in, you know, the West. P using this requires almost no game literacy because all you need to do is look down at the controller in your hands and you'll know what button you need to hit. Even, even cycling between targets with the D-pad is shown on screen. And since it's a, a turn-based game and not, say, Final Fantasy XV, an action game, something like that it actually has the potential to be useful to an amateur player. It's probably one of the best ways to learn how to use a game controller, a game like this. Because it requires you to use every single button consistently. Screen shake visual effects, the character turning, the fact that, it, you know, all that is feedback, and also the fact that it's direct input that you're making. You're not pressing attack in a menu and then telling, and then picking a target, and then the character is going out and hitting them disjointed from you. Pressing fire once equals a bullet fired. You are, uh, you are in direct control as you would be in a shooter or an action game. When you do have to go into a menu, which is only when you really only when you use personas, basically. This is go after talking about why physical attacking is neat, but I haven't done that yet. So, or did Ryuji do it? I, I don't even remember. When you do go into a menu, the um uh, the rest of the interface is all still really like you know the, the enemies. The enemies and the user and like the user icons down here are all still really bold. Everything else kind of gets darker, but the characters and the health and magic levels are all still very visible. And um, uh, you also have whenever you're using an attack that's going to affect your HP, your HP numbers are bobbin, and whenever you're using SP, your SP numbers are bobbin. Despite the fact that you cannot control, despite the fact that you don't get that sense of direct input when you cast a spell the same way that you do when you press attack or use a gun, you get um, uh, other feedback that makes it feel really nice. Good, forceful animation from the character and their persona, typically. And also, the attacks don't take long. The attacks come out very fast. Why does the why does the red turn pink on some floors of mementos? Can someone please can someone please explain this to me? Well, on to the next triumph. <laughs> well said, Yosuke. Yusuke. Yusuke. Kitsune. Kitsune is Japanese for two armed fox. Kitsune is Japanese for two armed fox. A note, because I didn't note it before. I'm talking about the uh, things that are kind of bad about some of the menus. Mentioned the fact that changing out your party members is under stats for some reason. Not a party menu. It's not that big of a deal, because it's honestly fewer menus you have to scroll through, but it's not clearly labeled. It's easy to forget where you actually have to go to perform a basic action you'll have to perform consistently. I guess not consistently. Hypothetically, you can play the entire game with one party, but most people won't. I certainly won't. I'll swap out as frequently as I like.
Well, I did. I got almost nothing. Probably gonna definitely need to get more footage of the battle stuff, but uh, that's fine. I guess that's all the notes. Talk about how um uh, how the uh, the battle controls are much punchier than typical because you're not you don't get the sense that you're picking something out of a menu. You get the sense that you have direct control over what's happening, like a conventional action game. In addition to everything being laid out very clearly. Uh, picking your, ha not having to make a, a separate input to pick your target necessarily, you just kind of flip left and right between them, and then performing the action instead of selecting the action when performing and then picking a target, uh, just makes it feel punchier, makes you feel like you're in more control, and by putting the selection reticle on left and right, and you can perform it at any time without cost, uh, is a lot better lets you look at all those enemies individually and it makes casting spells or attacking or shooting a gun or any other action makes it feel more immediate than a typical turn-based RPG. I think that's pretty much everything.